Are you tired of spending a ton of money on drawer pull hardware for shop projects when you just really don't need anything fancy like this? Well today, I'll show you how to make an easy to build jig so you can make your own drawer pull cutouts. I started out by sketching out the shape of the size of the handle I wanted to cut out. This is a really important step because I wanted to make sure that the handle wasn't too narrow or too short to fit my hand. Once I had the shape of the drawer pole roughed in, I marked the center points for the inside radius of the corners. When drilling out these inside radius details, I'm going to use a drill bit slightly larger than the diameter of the templating bit that I will use for cutting out the drawer pole. By using a larger diameter drill bit, I'm going to reduce the chances of getting burn marks in the corners of the cutout. For my purposes, I'll be using a half inch template bit, so that means I should use a 5 8 inch drill bit for the inside corners. To make sure I get a clean hole drilled through the jig, I'm going to drill halfway through one side of the board and then flip it over and drill through the other side. This is a good way to reduce any chance of blowout, especially since I don't have any sacrificial material on my drill press table. With the holes drilled, I can head back over to the workbench and use a combination square to lay out exactly where I want my cuts to intersect with the holes that I drilled. These need to be super accurate and should be perfectly tangent to the holes I drilled earlier. Over at the bandsaw, I went ahead and started to cut out right along the lines, as closely and as carefully as I could. If you're following along at home, this is critical because it means less sanding, and I'm pretty sure we can all agree that sanding sucks. Unfortunately, there will always be some sanding involved when it comes to woodworking. I don't have a spindle sander, but I do really like using these little spindle sanders on my drill press. They work really well and are really cheap. I'll put a link in the description down below so you can snag your own. To help with the alignment, I nailed a couple of guide blocks to the front of the jig. This will provide a registration surface for the top of the drawer front. I plan to use this jig over and over again, so I installed some toggle clamps to help hold down the drawer front while cutting out the drawer pull cutout. I'll drop a link in the description below if you want to pick up some extra toggle clamps for your next project. To use this jig, I first had to find the center of the drawer front and then clamped it to the jig. I flipped the jig over and traced out where the cutout will be. Then I headed back over to the bandsaw and cut out most of the waste. This step isn't completely necessary, but it helps keep the router bit from working too hard and actually reduces the sawdust from the bit, which is pretty important if you don't have good dust collection on your router. Now that I have the rough shape cut out, I put the drawer front back in the jig, making sure it is centered, and then I use the template bit to cut the shape of the drawer pull cut out into my drawer front. Since my template bit is pretty short, I had to take the drawer front off the jig and then run it past the bit again to cut all the way through. I'm really happy with how well this drawer pull cutout jig works. It just turned out really nice, was really easy to use, and I'll definitely be using it on future shop projects. I've got some modular tool carts here and I'll be releasing a video on these in the next couple of weeks, so make sure you stay tuned for that.